The European Union is made up of the following main institutions. Some institutions of the EU work in a balanced intragovernmental way, whereby member states cooperate with each other when making decisions. Some decision-making power is held in supranational bodies, which operate independently of the EU's member nation-states. One institution is the European Commission, which is supranational, and is made up of officials nominated by member states. The Commission proposes and enforces EU laws and prepares the EU budget. The European Council is intragovernmental and consists of heads of the various EU member states. The role of this is to take strategic decisions, for example, deciding whether to admit new members to the EU. The third institution is the Council of the European Union, which is intragovernmental. This is made up of ministers from member states. It discusses policy areas, for example the environment, and works with the European Parliament to adopt legislation. The institution of the European Parliament is supranational. It is made up of elected members, as well as working with the Council of the EU to adopt legislation. It has influence on the adoption of the EU budget and accepts or rejects appointments to the Commission. Finally, the European Court of Justice is supranational. The job of this is to enforce EU law and to resolve disputes between member states. Membership of the EU has had a significant influence on the UK. For example, a Committee on European Affairs has been set up for Cabinet members to develop UK policy towards the EU, coordinating the work of government departments. Parliament must examine EU laws and proposed legislation from the EU must be reviewed by the Commons European Scrutiny Committee, although the amount of EU legislation makes this difficult to perform effectively. Some policy areas affected by the EU are now devolved to regional institutions. The UK Parliament therefore consults with devolved governments in policy making in these areas. The EU has power over some policy areas, but not others. For example, trade, the single market, social and employment, agriculture and fisheries, and environment policy are the preserve of the EU, or at least the EU negotiating with member states. Areas such as defence, taxation, healthcare and education remain the exclusive preserve of the UK. The UK-EU relationship is set to change due to Brexit. Negotiations are taking place over the terms of the UK's withdrawal from the EU and there have been divisions amongst ministers and MPs as to what those terms should be. Eurosceptics favour a hard Brexit, which would see the UK give up full access to the single market and customs union and have complete control over its borders. Others favour a soft Brexit, where the UK would give up its seats and MEPs on EU institutions, but retain access to the single market, meaning that the four freedoms would have to be retained. These factors have led to two alternative conclusions about the EU and its impact on the UK. Those who feel that the EU has impacted on the UK negatively suggest that membership has led to a loss of national sovereignty, a lack of ability to control the nation's borders and therefore a rise in net migration, restricted possible trading opportunities with non-EU states and handed over control of several policy areas to the EU. These views led to the demands for a referendum on membership, leading to the 2016 referendum. The alternative view of the EU is that, by pooling sovereignty with other nations, the UK is strengthened, and that in a globalised, interconnected world, that this is the sensible direction for the UK to take. In addition, the EU has granted important rights for workers and has established safety standards for products, and that, by being part of a single market, the prosperity of the UK is strengthened. It is safe to say that, by looking at the results of the Brexit vote, the UK is pretty much split down the middle on this question.